always go. See, we're all different drummers playing in the same big band. And if you're gonna play it, play it grand. You still son? Yeah. Why don't you put a matchbook under the leg? Well, I like to do the job right. And uh, since I'm not working, I have time to fix the things that, uh, you know, need fixing. <laughs> Rock solid. What are you drinking? Screwdriver. <laughs> Morning has kind of a tool motif. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we can rule out carpentry as a possible job area. <laughs> Don't you have something to scrub or mop? Uh... I'm sorry, excuse me. It's none of my business. It's not my place to say anything about what you do with your life. No, it's not. But I'm going to tell you anyway. You've been sitting around here feeling sorry for yourself and destroying your furniture long enough. Well, I'll be the judge of when I've destroyed enough furniture, all right? Get a job. I had a job. I moved here for a job. But on my first day, I got fired because I presented a, a good, good idea. idea. Poor Tom. <laughs> Suicide hotline could really use someone like you. Oh, Bad stuff happens. You got to deal with it. When my husband walked out yeah, on me, Yeah, I had to move to a trailer and clean houses to make ends meet. Oh, poor homecoming queen. Yeah, well, at least I put food on the table and it didn't slide off. <laughs> Janice. Janice, you can't compare yourself to me. No, no. Why not? Well, because your life could change in a second. You meet some middle-income guy and suddenly you're not cleaning houses anymore. That's pretty sexist. No, no. That's realistic. Statistics say that whatever a man is doing when he's 33 years old, well, that's what he'll be doing for the rest of his life. Well, I'm 35. <laughs> <laughs> Carol Ann, what are you doing home from work? I had an accident. Are you all right? Did you pay the car insurance premium, honey? It wasn't my fault, Tom, really. It Did you wasn't. hit someone? Well, Ann, sit down. Tell us what happened. Well, this, uh, this Porsche came out of... You hit a Porsche? <laughs> he hit me, Tom. Wayne arrested the driver. Oh, it was his fault, then. Yeah, he was just a 12-year-old kid. You know, some young punk or something from California or somewhere. You know, first of all, he calls me a dumb blonde. <laughs> and then he actually asked me out. You know, and of course I said no, okay, so don't worry about that, hon. Yeah. But uh, because I said no, calls me an ice princess. I mean, what an angry young kid. I just can't believe it. I think, you know, he just must not have been breastfed as a child. Well, why don't you come upstairs and lie down, okay? You know, Tom, when something like this happens, it really makes you realize you can't keep putting things off. Yeah. Let's start having babies right now, okay? okay? <laughs> I just want you to know that I really love you and I want to make you Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Smithson residence. Who am I? Who are you? <laughs> no, you tell me first. <laughs> really? Carol Ann wants me to massage her legs with mayonnaise. Uh, I think you might want to take this call. It's your son. My son? <laughs> How did he get my number? I got some woman. I don't think this should be counted as my one phone call unless she's great looking and hot. Let me talk to her. Dylan? No, Wayne. Tom? Wayne! I got some kid down here. He says he's your son. You want to come down and make an identification? Yeah, I'll be right down. Uh, let's not say anything about this to anyone, all right? Like Carol Ann. Why? Well, it might seem a little silly to you, but I never told her I had a kid. How could you not tell her you had a kid? It was a judgment call. <laughs> the night I told her I'd been married before, she went into the bathroom and shaved her head. Probably should have mentioned him before her hair grew back. Well, <laughs> hindsight, huh? <laughs> but I'm gonna tell her. Carol Ann? Yeah? We're all out of mayonnaise, honey. I gotta run to the store. <laughs> Not too much off the top. <laughs> Just uh, keep it even. <laughs> Two of the hairs are already equal in length. <laughs> Shall I trim the third? 
Oh, just feather it in. Oh, Desmond. What happened to all the beautiful young women in Grand? Are you going to again whine about the impossibility of finding a date to go to Carnegie Hall with you? Yes, it bothers me. Now, there was a time, 30, 40 years ago, you could not walk down a block in Grand without seeing half a dozen beautiful, knock your eyes out, sweet young women. Where are they now? Some of them are in retirement homes. <laughs> Others are still gadding about with their walkers. <laughs> few lucky ones are in Arizona playing bingo. <laughs> it's a shame. That they had to age while you remained smooth-cheeked and boyish. Well, I might be 70, but I feel like 20. You might feel like 20, but you look like 90. <laughs> <clears throat> Adia, meet my dad, Mr. Harris Walden, and, and Desmond. He's our servant, but we treat him like family. Oh, my dad seems to like your tattoo. Is it an anaconda? Rattlesnake. <laughs> Where did you find this delightful creature, Norris? Well, the carnival must be in town. <laughs> no, no, actually, she found me. Yeah, she saw my show on public access. She called me up, said she wanted to meet me. Get this. She wants to be my disciple. <laughs> yeah, tell him, Adia. I've been diagnosed an addictive personality. Yeah. <laughs> So now this flower wants to belong to you, Norris. Yeah. Well, we're, we're just exploring the idol worshiper thing. <laughs> oh, come on, my dear. I I'll take you outside. I'll show you the tree I was sitting under when I came up with my doctrine of not thinking. <laughs> and this works out, I might start my own little cult. Huh? Well, we got extra blankets and the stables are empty. <laughs> How could I have ever fathered a son like this, Desmond? Say something to cheer me up. Well, maybe he isn't yours. <laughs> I don't guess his mother's gonna press charges, even though it was her car he stole. No, I'm sure she won't. And Carol Ann? Oh, she's forgotten it by now. She was pretty upset after the accident. She kept saying she wanted to talk to his parents. <laughs> won't she be surprised? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, Wayne? Could we keep this son thing just between us for the time being? Why? Because. I hear you. <laughs> All right. It's great talking to a guy. You know, you don't have to... To, uh... You're right. Exactly. Yeah. I'll go get, a. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm going to be seeing my kid for the first time in 10 years. You don't know Carol Ann, do you? No. Well, I, I would have been to see him before, but I, I thought it was best just for everyone to, just for me to stay away, you know? I didn't want to leave. It was my in-laws. They hated me. Yeah. Well, I was a car salesman out in the valley, see? And they lived in Beverly Hills, and I was never good enough for their daughter, you know, their precious daughter. <laughs> That's your dad. Dylan? Hey. I I'm your dad. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> Boy, you've really changed. <laughs> I haven't seen you since you were, you know. <laughs> I don't remember you. I remember your shoes. Shiny white loafers. Uh, well, I was selling cars back then. <laughs> what do you do now? Boy, 10 years really shoots right by, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, gee, that felt great. <laughs> We're gonna have to call your mom and get you back to California. She must be worried sick. She's in South America with a bunch of movie stars saving all the rainforests. Ah, uh, she left you alone. I went over to stay with Nana and Grandpa. Oh, they're still alive, huh? Yeah. Too bad. In-laws. So you think I can hang out with you for a day or two? A day or two? Why, you... You can stay as long as you like. Well, go on, get out of here. Take him home. Uh, wait, can I talk to you just for one second? <laughs> I, I, I can't take him home. You can't if I say so. I'm the law. <laughs> Could he stay at your place just for tonight? 
I don't have a place. I live with my parents. <sighs> What's the deal, Tom? Well, uh, Carol Ann doesn't know about Dylan. How could you not have told her you had a kid? I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna tell her this afternoon, or tonight, or early tomorrow morning. Now, Wayne, we, reach out. This is a, a, a lonely, helpless little 12-year-old. Just for the night. Please, Wayne, what do you say? No. No, I'm just kidding. Of course you can stay over. Oh. We'll have a good time. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Dylan? Miss Kruger? Dylan? Miss Kruger? Dylan? The concert has concluded. Mr. Weldon has been given his Life Achievement Award, and now you're at the gala dinner. Well, it's about time I'm starved. Once again, without the personal revelations, madame. Thank you. <laughs> Janice, Mr. Weldon has empowered me to secure a woman to go with him to Carnegie Hall. I've seen every female within a 50-mile radius. You are literally my last hope. Please, Janice, work with me. Oh, Desmond, why, why do I want to do this? Perhaps because you would fly first class to New York, stay in a fabulous hotel, spend the evening at Carnegie Hall, seated between Harris Weldon and the President of the United States. Yeah, what if he asks if I voted for him? Lie. <laughs> and the next morning, after you've finished your breakfast in bed, a woman will come into the room. She will clean, make the bed, change the towels. She will be the maid, and she won't be you. Fun, huh? <laughs> yeah. Don't say yeah, say yes. Yes. Night, Dad. Night, Mom. <laughs> you know, I always wanted a little brother, but my mom went into menopause right after I was born. <laughs> it wasn't her fault. It just happened. I was her last egg. <laughs> my dad walked out on me and my mom. Tom? I wouldn't pay him as a kind of man that would do something like that without good reason. He did it. Huh. Well, come on, let's hit the hay. You take the lower bunk. You can have it. <laughs> the lower one has the guest sheets. I don't want to sleep looking up at the bottom of a bed. Sleep on your stomach. <laughs> Why can't I just sleep on the top? Because you might fall out and crack your head open. It's my head. It's my room, and I don't want brains all over my rug. Now take the lower bunk. <laughs> Fascist pig. <laughs> What'd you say? You heard me. You know, I'm gonna pretend I didn't... Punk. I'm not tired yet. I'll club you over the head, then you'll be tired. <laughs> I'll say your prayers and go to sleep. I don't believe in God. I don't like you. <laughs> I don't care. Are you playing with my gun? <laughs> oh, did I wake you? No, honey, not really. Well, actually, yeah, a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Tom? Honey, I, I'm sensing that you've been under some emotional strain lately, and uh, I certainly don't want to be a prying wife, you know that. But uh, why are you holding the toilet? Well, it was running. And you caught it. <laughs> That's really good. No, 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 I, I, I was, I was going to fix it, Caroline, but when I ripped this out of the floor, I, I had an epiphany. Really? A sudden revelation of the truth of my life. Just like that, honey? Yeah. I've been denying everything I am. 
I'm trying to fix things around the house, but I'm not handy. No, yes, you are, dear. You really are. I'm trying to get my job back at the piano works, but I don't want to be an employee. I want to be my own boss. And I've been denying that I want a child. Now I know I want to be a father. <laughs> I want to live the truth of my life. I want to be what I've always wanted to be. An entrepreneur. With a kid. Well, Tom, this sounds too good to be true. Oh, it's true, honey. Every word of it. Well, then, put down that toilet and come to bed. <laughs> Wayne, Wayne, take it easy. Take it easy, Wayne. Tom, open the door, Tom. Open the door. What happened? No, no, don't bring him over now. I'll come and get him. Now. I'm leaving now. Tom, are you all right? Please open the door. Uh, yeah, I'm fine, honey. Um, I'm fine. I'll be right there. <laughs> So what happened at Wayne's? <laughs> Nothing. I couldn't sleep as all. So I was looking at his gun. It went off. <laughs> his parents woke up. They're old. They started coming at me. It was like Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> well, well, we'll find a place for you to sleep. Why can't I just sleep at your house? Well, I'll tell you. It's, it's because we're having it gassed for termites. Yeah. I can't lie to you, Dylan. You can't sleep at my house because Carol Ann, my wife, doesn't know about you. How could you not tell her you have a kid? You're not the first person to ask me that. You denied my existence? Well, don't make a big deal out of it. Look, I'll tell her you exist tomorrow. Tonight, you just do as I say. Why should I? Because I'm your father. Yeah, right. Who lives here? Janice Pacetti, my cleaning lady. Very nice person. What the hell are you doing banging on my door at this hour? She seems nice. I wanted you to meet my son, Dylan. Hi. What are you doing out here? He should be in bed. Yes, he should. Could he stay here tonight? No. Just sleep here. Once, no, no. One, why don't you no, wait no. inside? It's cold, okay? Don't make noise. People are sleeping. Look. Tom. I am not keeping your kid here. You have to. Why? Give me one good reason. One? I'll give you 50. First of all, I respect you more than anyone else in this town, Janet, myself included. Reason number two, you know how painful divorce can be on a child. Reason number three. Who are you? And where's my mom? She's outside talking to my dad, Tom Smithson. I'm Dylan. What's your name? Emma. <laughs> That's a very pretty name. Really? I, I never liked it. I was named after my dad, Eddie, but Etta. It always sounded like something a sick sheep would say. Etta. <laughs> what name would you like? Well, I think Monique is nice. You have a lot of hair. Think so? <laughs> Thanks. Number 15, you have a very clean mobile home. Yeah. Oh, bless you, Jen. <laughs> well, uh, Etta, looks like we're going to have a guest for the night. You'll have to share a bed, sorry. No That's problem. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Etta, I'm talking to you. You're going to be sharing a bed with me. I knew that. <laughs> I can sleep outside in your car if I'm in the way. You won't be in the way, Dylan. I mean, we've got plenty of room. <laughs> Let's all stop smiling and go to sleep. Good night, Dylan. Good night. Sleep tight. I will. Don't the bed bugs bite. Let us stop it. <laughs> See you in the morning, Monique. <laughs> Thank you.
Brand will be right back after these messages. <laughs> so out of all the, the gurus and the spiritual leaders you followed, who said the best thing? You don't have to say I did. Well, it would probably have to be the leader of the motorcycle gang I rode with. He said, lean into the turns. <laughs> Well, I'd like to meet this guy. What's he look like? He's the one with the red beard. You rang, sir. Oh, Desmond, yes, I just wanted to thank you for suggesting Janice as my date for Carnegie Hall. I live to serve. She's certainly a fine-looking woman. Have all the other arrangements been made? Yes, I've seen to everything. The plane, the limo, Hotel rooms. Rooms? Adjoining. My old friend. <laughs> Everything's going to be okay? 43 degrees in Grand at 4.02 in the AM. And you're listening to WPNO, where we play nothing but music from midnight to dawn. Here on WPNO, your all-music, all-night radio station in Grand. We hear all your favorites all the time. Less talk, more music radio. Next on an all-new L.A. law, Roxanne's heading up a workplace walkout, and Grace receives a stunning offer to swap law briefs for robe and gavel. And Sunday night, don't miss Unsolved Mysteries, third anniversary special edition with updates on the most intriguing cases of the year, plus exciting, baffling new mysteries that only you may be able to solve. Sunday night, only on NBC.